Let's get into this Big Michael stuff with Charlemagne yes, so the good. God. I think people really like, you know, what they like about Big Mike the most. Of course, he's Logan Paul's assistant uh, from the Impulsive. We've been on his ass for a long time. Took a little break from we Big Mike. We discovered him, by the way. I feel like we did we discover did. Big Mike. There was nobody doing a video. You can cut to me. There's nobody doing a video on Big Mike before us. We were there. I, I mean, I remember when I first saw Big Mike sit there with Logan, it, it really just hit me like a ton of bricks about how bad this guy was. And I think the reason he's so popular here is because we all went to school with a guy like this Big Mike, right? He was there's one of him in every high school, a very relatable character, and he was never meant to be in front of the camera. You know, so uh, the fact that he was thrown in front of the camera and the fact that he's had to go through all this is very relatable to us, I believe. Uh, here he is with Charlemagne, really blacking it up for Charlemagne. A lot of, you know what I'm saying? 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 Him and Logan, and it's weird. You know, I always wonder if I ever had um, a black person that would go near me, uh, the first thing I would ask them. <laughs> What's so fucking funny about the first thing I would ask a black person if they're if I was ever able to be around one without it being a thing, it would be like, do you don't you despise when white people start accenting it or do you not notice because you're so hood? Do they, they notice? They notice. They right? notice. No, no, no. I'm saying and they're so used to it, black people, that they don't even call it out. They you know what they say? Mm. And then they move on. People in the chat say it all the time say what they're all the like time. i'm black and i hate that oh we have black people that listen to the show oh yeah la la wa love i love him. this lala i'd like to have a little black companion sometimes he posts something that only gets like five likes and people because he's black because of then, his race no 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 but then uh, <laughs> yeah. watch it and it's like the best clip i've ever seen i like la, bangers la, only la, i've that told guy. you this before i like la la wa and it's very exciting for us a whites to know a black man is listening it excites us. Uh, I love black, and I'd like a little companion. I'd like a little black guy to be with me, like a Mark S. Brown, but with less attitude. Mark S. Brownlee, or whatever his name is. I'd like a guy like that, always worrying about my tech stuff. Mark S. Brownlee became popular because of the anomaly. Here's this black guy. He got the latest iPhone. What the fuck? So people are watching because it's shock. I like Marquez Brownlee. He's got an attitude. He's got a filming style. It's very crippling. And uh, I'd like a guy like that. This Lala Ya, he's wearing a starter jacket. He's with a group of kids. He's out in the cold parking lot of Detroit all the time. going, no, 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 no. And he's a good kid, but the bad kids like him. That's a great way to be. That's a great way to be, a little chocolate companion. I'd love it. And uh, if you're black, reach out to me because I'd like this audience to be 60% African American by next year. Is it possible? And uh, to me, I've never been, you know, I'm from Chicago. There's black people everywhere. It's not crazy to us. But I'll tell you this, Lala, there are guys in this chat who think being black is crazy. Get rid of them. Okay, uh, let's show you this. And this is what I'm gonna, this is, I really want the black people to, and I'm sorry, you know, I'm really sorry to even do that too, because I, that's not where our minds are at. Okay. I want the African Americans to know that, the Afro American, to know that our minds are not there. We're saying that because there's other guys' minds that do go there. So to act like them is really, you make a horse's ass out of yourself. You ever heard that expression? I'm as dark as night. Someone says, we even got, wait till you see this black guy that I'm communicating with today. And you need that out here. Believe me, in the desert, the blacks are few and far between, and it's worse. I'll tell you what, I've lived in a fully black city where they're killing everybody. And I've lived in a fully white city now where they're killing everybody. I will say this. My experience with the whites, the bad whites, is way worse than my experiences in Chicago with the bad black. <laughs> Not kidding. Now here it looks like they're almost even. The whites here are down here. The blacks in Chicago were up here. The blacks in Chicago didn't give me a hard time every day. You know, they didn't take up two spots. They weren't wise guys. 
You know, most problems I have are with whites. I'll tell you that right now. Same. Same. I miss black people, man. I miss their smell. Want to move back? I miss their smell. I miss their scent. I miss their flavor. I miss going on the bus, being right next to a black person like this. I miss uh, Oprah Winfrey Studio. I used to go over all, every day to Oprah Winfrey Studio. I used to eat lunch across the street. I'm not kidding. I don't know what's so funny about that. I used to eat at this place called Wishbone, and I would see Oprah over there. I'd say hi to Oprah. All right, let's show you this. This is, um, of course, Charlemagne, the god. He's a black guy, and Big Mike and Logan, they really put it on thick. I hate when people do this. I really hate when they try to talk black around a black guy. I don't even know if they're intentionally doing it or they're just trying to, like, stay on the same cool level in their own mind. But it really is sick to see. And it's sick to see that it's still happening. Okay, here it is. Impulsive with Charlemagne. The God again. And why are we letting people from the UK tell us about... Why are we letting people from the UK... I hate Charlemagne, by the way, because of what he did to Kanye. I'll never forgive that Kanye West interview on The Breakfast Club. Neither. That's when I first got into Charlemagne, watching that Yeezus interview, where he just goes, so Yeezus is whack, man. And Kanye's like, oh my God. Yeezus is pretty whack. There's no drums. Oh no, that was yay. There was no drums. But I couldn't like, believe how he treated it. It's like, you cannot treat someone that way. So I've always hated Charlemagne, the God. I'm not saying the and here's another reason I hate him. Brilliant idiots, okay? How do you think Andrew Schultz has got his start? It's Charlemagne. Andrew Schultz and Charlemagne. And Charlemagne thought it was funny. Here's me and a white kid. Yeah, that's what black people in New York call white people. This white kid. And uh, they get together and they, you know, they, they were terrible together. Uh, that was really, really bad. Remember the days when we had to, to watch that? Remember those watching days of... Andrew Schultz on Charlemagne. It's almost a different world, right? Andrew Schultz, that's where he was from. Okay, so we should hate Charlemagne. His opinions are bad. He's always taken like the obvious take on things, but then he takes takes that like are so off and wrong and contrarian and just annoying, bad, aggravating takes. Uh, uh, that's just what he's been my whole life. So to see him here with the impulsive boys, I thought he was going to, and you know, he's always got like a hint of untrustworthiness with the white. But it seemed like he was Yeah, they a broke, blast. that's what I was going to get to. <laughs> they really broke that barrier pretty quickly. So Big Mike's little, you know, and he must get a hard on for these tall, white, East Coast guys, huh? His boyfriend, wow. Schultz. To me, and, and don't get a twist, to me, Charlemagne is gay. To me... <laughs> He had nigga from True Blood. Lamont, what's his name? Levette? Um, Leroy? What was that oh, guy from True Blood? Tongue. I mean, pull up that guy from True Blood. Rest in peace. He died. He actually died. That guy was great. Uh, the transvestite in True Blood. You know, this was before <laughs> trans was a, a thing. He was a cross dressing black guy. It looks exactly like Charlotte. Lafayette. Charm. Lafayette, of course, named after the city. I loved True Blood. Oh, my God. I loved True Blood. Isn't there a new show on HBO coming out where I, every time HBO has a new show, I go, this could be like the new True Blood. Isn't that funny with HBO? Like everything HBO, when they have a new show, I go, it's like the new Entourage. Oh, it's like the new Sex in the City. Oh, it's like the new True Blood. Three gay shows to you, but not to me. I love that stuff. So I can't wait. What did we see was coming out on HBO where I go, this looks like it's going to be the next True Blood. Can't remember. That was a big thing too. My whole life, every guy thought, oh, True Blood, we're supposed to think that's, like, gay or something, right? And you didn't even watch it. It's like, what's wrong with True Blood? It's the best show. I loved True Blood. Season two? We should rewatch it. Mm. See some of these? See yeah. some of those? See some of these? You ever see one of these? You know what that is? What body part is this? To you. Um... Don't say it. All right, Charlemagne, the god. Let's check out why the... Are we uh... Oh. There is. Uh, is there a specific time code to go yes, to at the beginning? Because so. I know they do this uh, thing at the beginning where they show you everything. Oh, you can just skip it. It's usually like 30 seconds in. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Let's 
Well, let's just watch it. Charlemagne and Paul should big mic stuff coming out. And George. why are we letting people from the UK tell us about words? Do we Thank know? You. Do we know what they call Thank cigarettes you. over there? Oh. <laughs> you know, anybody from the LGBT oh. community in America want to go over there and tell them to change the words for their cigarettes? Wow. We should. We should. That's return. what I'm going to do. If I ever get caught saying the N word and I have to publicly apologize, I will. Where I'm from, that's what they call cigarettes. <laughs> I'm just, literally. And then some people will be like, oh, hey. And then that's it. You give them that and you leave. You're free. That's a good, write that one down. You ever get busted saying the N word? You say, I'm so sorry where I'm from. That's what we call cigarettes. I'm, I just don't know what to say. I'm really sorry. I'm growing. I'm growing every day from it. That's what these people say. There's one kid on The Bachelor. He did blackface in high school. And it Eric. wasn't even blackface. It's not blackface if you just dressed up as a black guy for Halloween. He did Eric. Is that the winner. his name? Gabby's the winner. Guy. He did blackface. They can't get over it. They want to tear him down. He <laughs> and they want to kill her because he did blackface. And I, we have to reverse that. Blackface is fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how could that not be fine? You're not hurting anybody. You're literally only hurting your own skin by making it look like theirs. We should be the ones mad because of the damage we've done to our beautiful fucking skin Stop. what and i will never apologize well i'll do yeah i'll do the that's what we call cigarettes okay sorry Burn fire. i gotta to learn the symbols of this this dude discovered margaritas and has never been the same. He's an alcoholic. Spicy margaritas. All right, two quick things right off the bat. George has a camel toe. You'll notice that <laughs> oh, for yeah. the entire episode, he'll be covering it with a f pillow. His Mike's been making crotch comments this whole time. I'm so glad we don't have an HR. I've, I'll go straight to it. I've never been so far away from you before. You feel, you? This, did you did you set this up in a weird Wait, way? Yeah, George Janko, you know, luckily he's wearing a hat today. You should see how fucking Arabian he's become. <laughs> he's got this poof that shoots out and this giant fucking beard. I mean, the only thing he's missing is like a nose ring chain that connects to the ear and a big elephant that he rides on in. It's nuts, man. How Arabic are you trying to get with it, George? And I don't know about you, but here in America, we have a limit to how fucking Arabic you could look before we start going, oh. And be before we start not being pleased. Does anybody like that? That's how real people act. And I'm not afraid to say it. Okay, I got no problems with Arabs. When you start getting too Araby with all the fucking decoration, it starts making us mad for some reason, right? And that goes with any race. I wish we could just openly say that, you know. I don't hate any of these races, but I hate when you get too racy with yourself with all this stuff. Okay, sick. Not a good vibe here. All right, like if you saw an Indian like dressed in full Indian clothes. Not my type of, type of vibe. Goes for whites as well. Uh, yes, you know, and I would say, like, yes, those whites that Joe Rogan has, you know, like the hunters. Yes. How they dress, too, is that. the American version of, ooh, too white. Everybody's got a two, you know. Some people think, who am I want, uh, want to talk? And this is, by the way, from Russia. Yep. I and thought I it was stand Greek. Well, I stand with Russia in this whole Ukraine uh, thing. <laughs> I'm starting to come out, tell people about that, um, you know. And I also stand with Greece. Greek. Is it Greek? Greece. I stand with Greece. I watched a very cute couple go to Santorini last week. <laughs> you should have seen the place. Eh, someday. Yeah. Anyway. Someday. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay, here it is. Uh, Charlemagne, the god with these guys. Let's bring them in. Japan, do I really have a camel toe? Once again? They got a camel toe. Camel toes are kind of hot. They're in right now. Shut and I'm Middle up. Eastern, so camel toes are camel toes? that like, really gets us going. Yeah, right. Shut right. the fuck up. Nice, uh, nice joke. Nice cultural joke. I awesome joke, George. Yeah, okay, fun. quickly. I just uh, want to... Nice yeah, cultural okay, joke. Middle Eastern food. Delicious. As long as they're not in a bad mood. Yeah. That's what every Middle Eastern place should say. Delicious food. As long as I'm not in a bad mood or texting with somebody like a woman. Because believe me, they will. You go to a Middle Eastern place, the food is delicious. 
and you could go the very next day and wow. You ever seen what they're trying to do now? You know, I love a shawarma, right? And that is a rotisserie meat. It spins on this rotisserie. The idea is to crisp the outside, you know, give it a little crisp, and then you cut it off. It falls. It should fall out into little pieces. It should almost look like blooming onion strands, man. Shawarma. But then these lazy Middle Easterns, what they'll do now, they don't have time for that shawarma to spin all day. So what do they do? They cut the meat off before it's actually crisped. And then they just throw it in a pan and heat it up. They give you a shawarma sandwich. You ever got a shawarma sandwich where it's all gray, no crisp, and it's like wet and sandy? It's because they have no quality control for anything they do. And if they're in a bad mood, everybody's food is just fucked up. That really pisses me off. And they'll never change. So there you go. That's my take on Middle Easterns. Also, George just shop. said something about him riding a camel or something like that. And then yeah. Logan went... Nice cultural joke. I know. Logan is, is very, yeah, that's him. Nice cultural joke. Logan is really isn't mean? in the mix. Like, Logan, racist jokes go right over his, like, he don't know nothing about, like. Yes, he does. He what? recognizes cultural jokes. Ah, well, look. He points I'm Middle Eastern, so camel toes. Camel toes? That, like, really gets us going. Yeah, right, right. Nice uh, nice joke. Nice cultural joke. I awesome joke, George. Yeah, okay, fun. quickly, I just uh, want to. He just learned about cultural jokes. <laughs> cultural. He's very out of the loop when it comes to types of jokes. Okay, are they going to bring in this guy? Yeah, you got to go to 850 for him to Ooh, come in. 850. 8.50. 8.50. Charlemagne, I really can't stand Lafayette. I, I hate to even call him Lafayette because I liked Lafayette mm -hmm. from True Blood. Man, did they put him through hell with all that stuff. Man. Fuck, that wasn't fair. 8.50? Yeah, is when he walks out. All right, here he comes, folks. Charlemagne. Yep. We talk about fucking peeing on bathroom floors, economy dicks. mouth breathers, and dicks. I, can we circle no, back to that? What does that mean, about mouth dicks. breathers? It's like when you breathe out of your mouth. <laughs> God, I'm pretty sure we all do that, right? Or no? Get the frick out of here. We have an important guest, and you're talking about fucking breathing? Ooh. Bring it, bring it, Sean. It's very cringe. Damn. In the all blue. Blue, blue. All strong blue. This week. What's up, baby? How you doing? What's up, bro? brother? How are you? He looks like he's ready. What's up, brother? <laughs> you can't call a black guy a brother. La, la, la. La 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 That's how I address you now. No, la la ya, I think it is. Uh, what would you do if someone came up, yo, sup, brother, sup, brother? Unless that guy is like a DJ. Or oh, like a Jesse way. Pinkman style guy. Yeah, yeah, what do you think about forever. that? Let's have a direct communication with like three fellas in the chat. What would you say if I came up to you and like, yo, brother, yo, what's up? And I think Big Mike had another... So Logan Paul called him brother, and then listen to Big Mike. Blue, blue, blue all strong blue. This week. What's up, baby? How you doing? What's up, baby? How you doing? <laughs> what's up, baby? How you doing? Yo, what's up, Do brother? Do you think he really thought about what his opener was going to be, and he landed on baby? Baby, because baby is like, okay, it's not like corny. It's not on the nose. I do understand that brothers are using this term baby, okay? Uh, and they are. And it's more... You know, within uh, the culture of vocabulary. And uh, believe me, I think that is something Mike stayed up for probably two weeks trying to figure out. What would be the best? Can't be brother. It can't be yo, 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 homie. <laughs> baby, that's per And I don't like that. I don't like the baby. I don't like boy. I don't like any of that stuff. What's up, uh, brother? How are you? He looks like he's ready to start trouble, bro. He's ready to start or, or sprint somewhere Why? quickly. <laughs> quickly. What's happening? Why? Because he's black? Why does he look like he's ready to start <laughs> trouble? He's like 5'1". He's got mascara on, blush, and a baby blue jumper. You know what? We're, he looks like he's ready to start trouble. That's like a flirtatious flirt. He looks like he's wearing you James look like you're Charles ready to merch. Yeah, you look like you're wearing James Charles's daytime clothes. <laughs> uh, that look very wacky with a full face of makeup, by the way. You really can't wear, like, hoodies and a full face of makeup. It just doesn't match, James. <laughs> or, or sprint trouble. somewhere quickly. 
<laughs> quickly. Well, look at that. You look like, so Big Mike's thing was, yeah, you look like you're ready to get in a lot of trouble. And then Logan's like, yeah, or that he's going to sprint somewhere quickly like an African. It's like, what the hell is this? You got baby brother. He looks like he's going to sprint, which is an old school racism thing. And then uh, he looks like he's going to get in a lot of trouble, which, of course, that's four racist remarks in the first second. All Strong blue. This week. What's up, baby? How you doing? What's up, bro? brother? How are you? He looks like he's ready to start trouble, bro. He's ready to start or, or sprint trouble. somewhere quickly, <laughs> or yeah, or, or rob a liquor lie. store or steal cigarettes. I mean, that's really to me. That's some white privilege. Is there anyone? And by the way, black people, what do you think about white guys from Ohio talking to you? Does that chill your fucking bones? Could you imagine if you were black and somebody from Ohio like Jake Paul came up to you with that face? Good. Fucking God. You either fall in love with him for life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or he becomes or your worst enemy. Him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or figure out how to use him for money. A lot of black people do that too. Like black people hate white people, but they're they will use a white person like with no problem in their heart. You know, they'll instantly use someone. Okay, here. <laughs> What's happening? What's good? What up, bro? We are, we're fired yeah, up happy today. to be here, man. This angle's fucked, too. You really fucked us with this angle today, bro. Up, bro. We're usually facing the guests and shit. I feel like I'm all the way over here. What? Come on, y'all making too much money, man, for this, right? No, because all right, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you. You're going to see, you know, this is a big moment for Big Mike. Big Mike is from Big East Coast, right? And Charlemagne is the East Coast radio man. So, like, you know, the breakfast club on the East Coast, especially when Mike was on the East Coast, it's a big deal, right? This is like, you know, New York holds these guys. You know, this is like the Howard Stern of hip-hop to Big Mike. So Big Mike's been very nervous about this. Of course, Big Mike is a hip hopist. Big Mike knows Hip hop, and he is very into Biggie Nas J. Nobody calls him J, you know. So, but he'll he'll J. Of course, I'm into. So this is a big day for Mike, you know. And uh, I didn't even realize that till we were halfway in how big of a day this was going to be for Mike. And we saw this as kind of ignoring it, you know, like always. And then I, oh yes. Big Mike is the hip hop guy, you know. He's always trying to like prove to people that he knows about hip hop, and you're gonna see that here today in some real revolting reaches. All right, so here we are. Should we go to our first time code of the yes, day? Yes, we want to go to 22 minutes in. 22. Uh oh, 22. Another racist number. Any bullet caliber is racist as a number. Yeah, and that's funny because Brian Callen brought up that if he could buy any gun, any gun, it would be a 22 <laughs> because he could take out all these guys with it. He goes, you shoot a guy in the neck with a 22, the rest of the army is going to turn around and go, what happened to John? Because he's just going to be falling on the ground with a tiny. So, you're not going to be able to hit him. I, I promise you're not going to be able to. This is what he's saying. Okay. 22, 22, it means something today. Let's see what happens here, our first time code of the day. I think this will start making sense very quickly. High intensity cardio stuff. Oh, I hate it. It's hard. Man. Oh man, we did it it's last hard. Friday. Oh my God. He had us doing like these 15 second intervals intervals on the uh, the, the, uh, the treadmill yeah. and it was like at 15, it was, oh, it was wild. But I mean, it's worth it in the end though. You know what I mean? And, and after you do it, you feel great when you walk out. You feel oh, great. Man, you feel incredible. He reminds me of like when RuPaul is dressed as a man. <laughs> yeah. You know? He's got that he sweet look fucking look. Drag. Yes. Has anyone ever gotten him in drag? It's time. And you could smell the burntness of his cacao from here, <laughs> right? It's a little bit of shit mixed with a little bit of cacao, mixed with a lot of cologne. It's the smell of a valet driver. Yep, he's been in your car. Yo, okay. I gotta be honest with you. There we go. Earlier we were talking about disagreements. Okay. Uh-oh. I'm the hip hop head of the show. I'm okay. 37 years old. Yep, I mean, I gotta stop there. I'm the hip hop head of the show, 37 years old. It's not like a huge, you know, he thinks people are gonna hear he's 37. Oh my God, you're on YouTube, you're 37. Hip hop head, wow. <laughs> 
it's so weird how this hasn't been beaten out of Mike yet. Yeah, we are surely uh, uh, people have made fun of him enough. He must for him to have not seen. want to bring this up anymore. It's like how many times are we going to flip on Big Mike and he's saying the exact words we've been goofing on him for saying forever and it's like and he's getting worse too. and it's getting worse yes it, exactly it's like usually you start cutting those words out of your vocab after people have been saying them so many times to you to make fun of you um but nope here he is the hip-hop oh, head okay i gotta be honest with you earlier we were talking about disagreements okay i'm the hip-hop head of the show i'm okay. 37 years old I was around for Funk Flex the Tunnel. Okay. When Jay said, don't be the next contestant on the Summer Jam screen, I was okay. there in Nassau. Like, wow. I'm that guy. Wow. Right? I'm that fucking guy. So you, that's, Michael Jackson came out at that yeah, show. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Mm, I don't think he was there. I think some of his friends were there. I think this was a dream of him and his friends to go to this. And yes, you lived there, so you could say you went there. If you saw Michael Jackson... I'd be hearing about you like seeing Michael Jackson, be, right? That's like Denny I mean, poker. He goes, wait, you were at that event? Michael Jackson was there. And Michael Jackson didn't do a ton of fucking meet and greets back then. I don't know if you, you remember that. So I think we would hear some Michael Jackson stories uh, from Big Mike. I've seen everything that's come out of Big Mike. We've heard all his tales. Nothing about Michael Jackson. It's SummerSlam or wherever he was. So I don't think he was there. I think this happened. He heard about it on the radio. Wished he was. This is like if I tell people I went to Woodstock 99. I mean, I'd probably get away with it, right? Like, I could probably come on here my whole career and be like, yeah, I, it was, I was at Woodstock 99. Yeah, I remember when Green Day did the, uh, uh, you know, they were throwing mud at That was Woodstock 94, nigga. But I could still get away with it, right? And like, when nobody he brought would up the Michael Jackson thing, he just went, Fox and quickly moved on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear that again. Fiction. Yes, fiction. You got it. I'm the hip-hop head of the show. I'm Fuck. 37 years old. I was around for Funk Flex the Tunnel. Okay. When Jay said, don't be the next contestant on the Summer Jam screen, I was okay. there in Nassau. Like, wow. I'm that guy. Wow. Right? I'm that fucking guy. See, and you know, she could say it that way. because He was there in Nassau, meaning he was in the county. Right? Mm. And see, he has tricky ways. Him Whoa, and Danny wait, have wait, tricky wait. ways. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Play it again. Yeah, listen to this. Because he's not saying he was at the concert. Ooh. I was there, meaning I lived through this time that happened in my city. But it makes people think, like, he was actually wow. there. <laughs> and then, yeah, Michael Jackson was there. He could have easily said, oh, I wasn't actually there. But, I mean, I was there through this time. He loves playing in that kind of space because... You could kind of get away with anything if you phrase things that way. You know, Danny does it all the time. Show. I'm 37 years old. I was around for Funk Flex the Tunnel. Okay. When Jay said, don't be the next contestant on the Summer Jam screen, I was okay. there in Nassau. Like, wow. I'm that guy. Wow. Right? I'm that fucking guy. So you, that's, Michael Jackson came out at that yeah, show. Facts. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> the biggest. I feel like Charlamagne knows something's up. I feel like Charlamagne's like, that was just an and industry show and very hard to get. I couldn't even get a ticket to that. And George is laughing in the background. If you mm. listen carefully, okay, Dead, don't be the next contestant on the Summer Jam screen. I was okay. there in Nassau. Like wow. I'm that guy. Wow, right? I'm that fucking guy. So you, that's Michael Jackson came out at that yeah, show. Facts. <sighs> what is it? This one. Oh. Okay. This is like, oh man, nigga lying right to my face, huh? All right. I let him lie. That's what that look is. Wow. Yes. Facts. That's why I feel bad up for, for black the big I really that's why I feel bad for black people. They gotta put up with all this crap, huh? Right, Jules? They're always uh yes. oh, hi brother, hi homie, hey fellow. And they're just they gotta just you know, eat it all up. All right. It's yeah. disagreement. We see politics is a new thing. People yelling at each other about Trump and Obama and all there that shit's go. new. Back in that day. You were either Team Ether or Team Takeover. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're really and setting this. Is this the really scene. what a black person wants to hear about his favorite days of hip hop? Oh, you were sharing this shit with me too, nigga? Damn. Kind of ruins the nostalgia. <laughs> right? Like, I don't want to share this with Big Mike. I thought I was being a homie as a black guy, listening to Jay Z and his Ether. But no, it turns out this dipshit was doing it too. So I was doing the same thing as some corny ass white. Great. Well, look at that. 
biggest disagreement, we see politics is a new thing. People yelling at each other about Trump and Obama and all that shit's new. Back in that day, you were either team ether or team takeover. Yeah. You were team. And, it, and you know, cause you could tell that was like a line that he had rehearsed in his head. You know, every intro of impulsive, the first 30 minutes of every impulsive is Mike poorly acting out his fantasies that he had rehearsed in his head the morning of the show over and over again. So I know how this works as a hostess. Uh, you go in the shower, you're thinking about what you're going to say, you're thinking, but if you're bad and you're like an amateur and you're not a good actor, the more you rehearse, uh, the more that could actually backfire on you, right? Because you're not a good actor. You got to be a good actor. Rehearsal means nothing unless you're a good actor, right? At the end of the day. So when you're rehearsing these lines, you can tell this is what Big Mike's doing. He rehearses, rehearses. He's got it all sounded out in his head. He's hearing the laughs. From the other guys he's seeing it go down right but because he's such a bad actor he's got no talent he comes on here and tries to do it while still being nervous and then it just comes out all shitty right it's not the way he imagined like he's it. reading it yeah exactly um just because he's not good good enough at this yet so um that's what i see here that's what i see i see him practicing the speech at his head and having it delivered naturally, but because he has over rehearsed it so many times, it can't come out as anything but like very corny and very cringe. And shame on Charlemagne for allowing a white man to ask you this. And you know what? Behind Mike's back, Charlemagne will use this as an example of secret racism. Like you'll hear Charlemagne, if Charlemagne's with like another brother and they're doing their deep dive on subtle racism, they're talking about Big Mike's character all night and day. So why don't you say something now, Charlemagne? Because I'd appreciate it if you said something right now to their face. But no, they fall in fucking love. Watch this. New. Back in that day, you were either Team Ether or Team Takeover. Yeah. You were Team J or Team Nas. Yeah. I, w I really, I prepped for this interview today. Oh, did more you than Logan's face? Hold on. Logan was like, e Team Nas. Nas. Yeah. I, w I really, I prepped. Oh. oh. <laughs> Dude. Even I know Jay-Z versus Nas so stupid, dog. <laughs> Shit, dude. Like, that's all you remember, dog? What about Logan versus KSI? Dude. I, to be honest, like, you're, this is Logan. This is going to be Logan with it. Watch this. Watch this. Dude, bro, to be honest, like, for 15 years, you keep talking about, like, Jay-Z and Nas? Dude, I never even heard that. I will be honest, man. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. Ether and shit. He's that white. He's that white. Like, he's one of those guys where secretly, you know, it's like, he doesn't really like rap. You ever met a guy like that? I, I had an air. I'm going to out someone. Listen to this. This was an interesting time. Rock raps harder this year, right? Remember Eminem came out. Eminem got a lot of white people in the rap that didn't really listen to rap. And so there's like a lot of kids that only l would listen to Eminem, but they didn't listen to any other rap. I had a friend, you know, and, and he loved Eminem, this kid, Brian. And uh, Brian was part of our big friendship group. You know, we all had, uh, you know, we were all like bad kids. Everybody listened to rap. Everybody bad. And um, I'm in his car one day and we put on uh, Biggie. I put on Biggie. And literally, like, 30 seconds in, he goes, dude, I can do Eminem, but I can't really do this black shit. Like, really? And there are, Lala, I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of cracker-ass guys out there. And really, that's how they talk. I've seen them. I'll bust them for you. They do that. And Lala, have you ever met those guys? Where you go, they're, like, afraid of some rappers, too. You know? I know a couple people like that, don't you? You know a couple people like that, huh? Couple people you you might be related to that are like that. <laughs> you can tell there's some people. There's a line of how black the artist could be for them, really. And I think Logan is one of those people who has that line secretly. Him and brother Jake, Logan more so. All right. Well, let's see how Mike handles this. How will Mike show Charlemagne the God that he is tapped into the hip hop world? He's like Adam Twenty Two level. Type of Jay Z and Biggie Nas. I'm Adam 22. I'm uh, Felicia the Goat. No, he's not even like that. 
He thinks, yeah, he's more like a Megan the Stallion. He thinks that's like a name drop to show that he's into hip hop, you know? Megan the Stallion, yeah. No, but he beats her. Queen right there, yeah. Adam 22, killer, killer. Those are big names in hip hop. Okay. Uh, yeah. Here. Or Team Takeover. Yeah. Or Team J or Team Nas. Yeah. I, I really, I prepped for this interview today more than every other really? one of the 400 shows we have done. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ben Shapiro, Alex Jones, crazy shows. This is my lane. I want to pick your fucking brain. Oh, is he wearing about your guys' hip-hop. clothes? Warren Lotus? Wow. He oh, copied man. me. Wait, is that, but is that Warren Lotus or it is that like, like a it. copy? I can see the skull. He probably got it off Instagram as a fake. It's probably a fake. Don't be ripping off fucking Warren Lotus stuff, man. Don't do it, okay? Have some respect for that guy. You know, he really went he really went out of his way to give you some screen printing. It's nice. It is nice. I don't like this Lakers stuff though. I don't like no. sports stuff. I don't like sports clothes at all. It's cheap looking. And you want to tell people like this. Yeah, there's people like that, they get confused. They don't understand sports clothes are not cool. Sports clothes make you look poor. You know, Re- they really do. They make you look invisible. It's even worse. Nothing worse than sports clothes or anything related to a sports team. And you put that on, I hope you don't feel like that's cool. Like it looks ju- like, they, I mean, they're really bad people wearing your same shirt. That's all I'll say. <laughs> Let's do it. Because that's your, that's your space, right? That's, yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's my culture. Can you believe how he's talking to him? That's your I- space, right? Oh, uh, yeah, it's my culture. And it's like you want to pick his brain on what? Pick you his mean, brain on you what? You're tell black, him right? You're black, right? Jay Z Jiggy! Sh- for shizzle, right? And pick his brain about what? You just want to tell him how cool yes, you are. Yes, yeah. Pick his brain about what? Jay Z and Nas? Are you fucking kidding me? Why don't you just ask without this? And huge... by the way, Nas sucks. <laughs> But he did one good song, and I can't fucking even repeat it because it's the lyric is so vicious. How does it go? I really can't repeat it because I forgot. It's out it in July. It's the summer when niggas die. That's your favorite lyric. It's the summer when niggas cry. But it's the summer when niggas try. That to me is corny. Sorry, Nas. It's out it in July. Kanye wrote that one probably. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean Nas to me. I've given Nas so many chances. I didn't even like Nas when I, when he was at his best. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. That's from a measy parody of Drake. Okay, uh, let's hear some more. But look how he's talking to him, man. And listen to how Charlamagne goes, Oh, my Coulter. Culture 2. Bro, Alex Jones, crazy shows. This is my lane. I want to pick your fucking brain about hip hop. Let's do it. Because that's your that's your space, right? That's yes. Yeah, that's 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 my culture, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. What was the golden era of hip hop? I just brought up. The- I mean, come on. What kind of question is just asking? Him? What is the best song? <laughs> See, I know hip hop. I know the good questions to ask. Golden era, which is what they call eras of hip hop that were good. <laughs> and he said he did so. Look at much George. George is like, well. This is going to suck. Well, why don't you tell him about how he's not being genuine? And where is your money, bro? <laughs> like, collecting dust? Use it. Um, okay, let's see. Golden, what's my favorite? You know, you could refuse to answer questions. Does this, does anybody know that that's a, a, an option out there? I've never, I, well, you watch all these shows, they answer every question. Can't anybody ever go, shut up. Next question. The early 2000s. 50 Cent drops Get Rich. P- potentially perfect album. Jay drops Blueprint. Nas, Nas is going crazy. Kanye's starting to show his face. Yeah. Is- you see through this? Shouldn't you be like, please stop talking about my culture like that. But no, instead you're going to play with the white man like this. Disgusting. So you got a romance for these tall whites. It's apparent now. <laughs> Is that the golden era of hip hop? Well, I'm oldest. I'm 44. I was born in 1978. That's another <laughs> gun number. 44. You've got 22, 44. What other numbers of gun calibers will we see today? <laughs> I bet you we'll see about a couple more. Any more on my screen right now? There's a six. 
Some guns hold six bullets. So, <laughs> like, yeah, thank you guys. So for me, the golden era of hip hop would probably be like 90, 94. Not early Nas, yeah, bit, just getting into Biggie yeah, and shit. Yeah. Everything Nas to you. Everything Nas. I think I, hip, I like hip hop at 90, early Nas done. <laughs> well, please tell me it's Nas related love. Early Nas? Oh, no, actually, like, Nas isn't the only rap person, right? You know that, right? Ah, uh, big guy. <laughs> Ooh, you're making a face like somebody poopsied. 90, 94. Bit, not early Nas, bit, yeah, just getting into Biggie and shit. That's when, like, Wu-Tang first yep, came out, and that. Nas yep. just came out, and Biggie, and, like, Yeah, Wu-Tang forever. Oh, so you've heard of Wu-Tang. Right. Camp Click and Outcast and Goody Mob, you know what I mean? Like that, that 1900s era was like, that 1994 era was very, 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 very special. Very yeah, special. Because I saw your I saw your 2018 top five. Who was it? Oh, He's no. reading out of his phone. So this is, again, this is how you know it's over. I saw your 2018 top five. It's not a way to have a conversation. If somebody was talking to me via some notes, no, 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 no. The phone must be away in a pouch. By the way, we caught on Kill Tony. Look at this. Kill Tony makes you put your phone in a locked pouch. And we found this because uh, one of the uh, uh, contestants there, they wanted to call his mom. You know, that's so funny. And uh, they had to come with the pouch and unzip the guy's phone and unlock it for him. And then I'm going, wait, 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 wait. I thought this locked up phone pouch was so that we don't record and burn your material. What? That's how it was sold to us. You come to my show, you can't film because my material, this is what I live off, of course. I'm filming, I'm working on a special. I don't want my material out there. So we said, okay, sure. Not me, of course, but they did. Why, though, is Kill Tony locking up phones for an open mic? Someone Why? said they've been doing that ever since yeah. Ping Dang. Exactly. So Tony just doesn't want to get busted? How free speech is that? So he's saying stuff. He edits that out of the YouTube version, obviously, because why can't you have your phone there? If the whole thing's being taped anyway and it's being broadcast... There's people there. Why can't I tape it too? Unless you're trying to hide some words, which isn't very free speech and cool. You know, so I'm sick of Tony being like, I oh, yes, hello, the Legion of Skanks. I am your savior. You're not our savior. I want there to be a dangerous event where yes. a ton of people die well, stop and get it. injured. Enough because... said. <laughs> you sold me on dangerous event. Because their That's phones my bread and are butter. locked away and they can't call for yes. help. Yes. <laughs> oh, I, that is my dream for a Joe Rogan, Dave Chappelle, Tony Hinchcliffe, Peng Dang show. And everyone's got their phones locked up and they've, I don't know why school shooters don't first do this. You put the simple dimple, $5 chain, $2 padlock around every door. Believe me, that's enough to make these people go bananas. Um, lock them in. Their phones are all fucking locked. The fire is coming up to their fucking ankles. There's nowhere else to go. The doors are locked. And uh-oh, here come those weird screw bombs I made at home. And no one can call the cops because Joe Rogan couldn't possibly have the word do uh, the uh, chink get out. Oh, no. So I, I, you can't really be bragging about how badass... You are. You know, when uh, believe me, if you've seen Tony on Legion of Skanks, this would really start clicking how, like, all the Legion of Skanks fans look up to Tony as if he's, like, paved the way to be able to continue to tell racist jokes. You yes, know. and what's stopping... Sorry, I'm reading the chat, but what's stopping you from just bringing two phones? I've never understood this. Here's how it works. Watch this. Uh, Jules, you pretend you're security, and I'm coming to the, to the concert. Hey, give me your phone for the Yonder Pouch. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have a phone. Ha. Huh. I know. How can they prove like you have a phone? What, Even if I had a phone? a phone, say you... It's like, what do you do? Jury duty, too? You just show up? 
I've never understood why anybody would do jury duty in their lives unless whatever jury duty pays is more fun. And whatever jury duty is, is more fun than what you would be doing anyway. To me, jury duty is the same thing as being arrested. If you are in a courtroom, what does it matter which character you are? You're in the same place. I'm in the same place as a criminal. This is why I've never understood prison guards. Why would you want to be in jail? You're going to jail for free. <laughs> By yourself, you're wanting to. So I don't go to courtrooms. Would you want to be on trial defending yourself? It's the same thing as being the juror. You see, it's the same thing as being in the stance. It's the same thing as being the janitor. They're all in the same room for the same amount of hours. Why would you want to do that? So if you don't get out of jury duty, to me, I go, well, you either just enjoy it or you're completely retarded. And then when I see like people who give their phones to those lockboxes, just simply tell them you look here. Watch this, sir. Can I have your phone? Uh, Do it. No. 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 Say it to me. Sir, can I have your phone? Uh, I left it in the car because I know you guys take phones, so I didn't even bother bringing it. Thank you. Well, what are they going to do? Strip you fucking naked? <laughs> if you're not filming the act you're seeing against, they're asking you to not film. Then you're gay. I'm sorry. What are you there to enjoy this guy? <laughs> you should be there to film it, to hurt them. All right, let's see. We're going back to this. This is Big Mike Charlemagne, but I can't believe Tony. Yeah, I can't believe he's taking phones. That's fucking rude. And I just can't believe you guys gave in to this. You could say no. They depend on you. Take charge. All right, here we go. Um, uh, Charlemagne, Big Mike. It's Biggie, it's Nas, the golden era, it's Goody Mob, it's Na Na Na, it's Ludacris, right? I think uh, <laughs> Nelly. <laughs> Who else have you heard from the radio? Uh, my top five hasn't changed. So what was go, it? Go, Ghostface, yes. Jay, yes. Nas, yes. Scarface, yes. Killer Mike. Killer Mike. An honorable mention would be T.I. and, and uh, Jeezy. Killer Mike from Bill Maher? <laughs> That, by the way, I hope Killer Mike, I hope you know that. You're the guy from Bill Maher to me. You're not Run the Jewel. And by the way, does Run the Jewels have a white guy in it? Yeah. Then it ain't rap. Sorry. You know what? Run the Jewels to me is the gorillas, which I know you people like now all of a sudden. <laughs> and uh, they've tricked you. And you know what else is to me? It's... There's something a little off. And I don't like that killer Mike at all. I don't like him at all. Uh, and he's always protesting. So no, killer Mike is not cool. Sorry, guys. You got to get over him. You got to. And by the way, I don't mean any of this. This is just. I was thinking if I was a listener and I heard this and I was really into killer Mike. But why doesn't he like killer Mike? I don't fucking know. I'm just yelling about stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? I really have no. I'm sure he's done a great thing for you. You got to say how terrible he is, though. You understand? I don't think he's that amazing. He gives you like a... It's he's not a fake. Fun vibe. Like when you're listening to him. You don't name like, yourself okay, Killer Mike. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, um, imagine if I called myself Killer Mike. How about that? There's no cringe if you're black. They've escaped cringe. Killer Mike. You're Killer Mike. That's cool, though. Oh, so cool. Many Hi, I'm Murderer name. Steven. I'm serial rapist Steve. That's not funny to me to <laughs> mimic a murderer. Yep. And you still stand by <laughs> Thank that? You. Thank I you. I still stand on that. And so you can, you can. You're reading his phone. Look at this. So you can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can. That's not a conversation. It's a reading. Ignore. Uh, this is this was the hard one for me to swallow. You could ignore Pac completely. Pause. Um, you can call him Tupac. I understand. I hate shortening for industry. The real people in the in industry call it by the long name. That's how you know he's real. The posers call it by the shortened name. Okay. <laughs> so like an industry, like industry, like Brian Callen. I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if they're talking about Game of Thrones, it's not called Game of Thrones to, to Callen. Oh, yeah, my buddy worked on Thrones. You understand? He's shortening. Real assholes who aren't actually big shots in the industry, they shorten. Okay? 
if you're really a, a cool guy, you don't call him Pac. You go, Tupac Shakur. <laughs> His name wasn't Pac. His name isn't Yay. His name isn't Jay. It's not Biggie. Those are the nicknames his friends were allowed to call him that you overheard in their tales. Via the raps. Those weren't names for you to call them. I hope you know that. You know, I call Jules my wife. That doesn't mean you could call her my wife. <laughs> his wife. You're not a wife to you. Well, thanks. Um, get a wife. But, yes. Because that's my personal opinion. Okay, so, you know what no, I mean? so that's not a, that's not an objective list. If right. I did an objective list, Pac would be on there. Got it. But my personal top five, top seven, yes, that's my personal top. Based five, on top based five. on lyrics or based on how you feel, like what what is that list built off of? Because um, a little bit of everything: lyrics, uh, storytelling, impact of the music. You know, music provides soundtracks to your life, right? Like, when we think mm. about these songs, man, like, all of these songs that we love, we have memories attached to them. Like, there's probably a slow song that you like because that's the f first time you busted a nut. Right, you right, know what right, I mean? Right, right. Or, like, you could think about right, the prom right, right. or something. You yeah, was dancing with a young lady. Like, all of us got different moments that we got music attached to. It's so those people right there are named. I got memories attached to all of that, all of that music. I just think, like, <clears throat> and I want to ask you about this, too. It's like... But. You look back at Pac, and I I pulled up this. <sighs> wait till you hear this. Mm -hmm. Wait till you hear okay. this. Okay, you look back at Pac. You're gonna Something die. you didn't look back at too much. I mean, weren't we like eight years old? I mean, you're younger than me. You know, I'm sorry. Like Tupac was, you weren't like lining up with the age of like everybody that like mourned Tupac's death, bro. Like you weren't there yet. You watched other people do that. You know, and now you're like reliving the cool kids high school life as your own. I just know that's true. This is probably what, like mid 90s, 25, 30 years before Roe v. Wade is the center of all conversation. Word. We're talking about a song called Keep Your Head Up. Time to heal. Talking about a song called Keep Your Head Up. You shouldn't have to read all this. Charlemagne's not reading all this from a pad of notes. I know if you know. I thought so you were a hip about... hop head. I'm a hip hop head. That's what he was. I was going to say before. He said he did the most research, but the only thing he said so far is just listing yes. hip hop events. So what did you mainstream hip hop events that anyone who watched the MTV Movie Awards could? If uh, you're so 37, retell. why did you have to do so much research? Seriously, oh, shouldn't you just know this? Yes, I don't understand, and I don't understand why he thinks this is like impressing a subset of the underground. And like this is read not impressing anybody. Top five list off your phone, so you didn't memorize that either. Exactly. Biggie, Nas, <laughs> Young Hove. When he said, y'all know when the flow is loco, how did that make you feel? That's like what he- I wish he said that. Yeah, I mean, that, okay, yes, of course, yeah, that would be <laughs> fucking be funny. question. Young Hove, y'all know- Wait. Young Hove, y'all know when the flow is loco. Young V in the ROC. Yep. <laughs> Thoughts? I don't think that's the type of lyrics that transform a young Charlemagne. Well, wait till well, you Well, let's find out. Let's see what happens with my. do transform. Yeah, this is great. Ooh, he's making that little face again. <laughs> Ooh, God. Yikes, man. He really does look like his sister. Hey, Big Dyke. Well, I'd like to get, I wish we could see a reunion of her soon. I miss Hey Big Dyke. And we got some usernames with this Hey Big Dyke. A lot of Scars Club members. People like that. Hey Big Dyke. His sister looks just like him, so we call it, and it's a girl. Hey Big Dyke instead of, get it? Mid-90s. 25, 30 years before Roe v. Wade is the center of all conversation. Word. We're talking about a song called Keep Your Head Up. Time to heal our, our women, be real to our women. If, and if we don't, we'll have a race of babies that will hate the ladies that make the babies. And since a man can't make one, he has no right to tell a woman when and where to create That's one. That's right. Yeah. Like, bro. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Pac was that guy. That guy. So which Twitter post reminded you of this? You know what I mean? It's like, this didn't come to him. 
This was definitely on Twitter during all this abortion talk, right? Yep. And now it's his finding and his uh, example of this and that, is right? that really bro bro to you? Like when you read that, are you actually having? That's what bro. I was wondering. Like, is he actually? Having I don't that know. I mean, inside? I just can't imagine. I just can't imagine <laughs> being that blown away. I wouldn't care. When Tupac used to sing to me, I would go, "Brother, it sounds like gangbanger music," and I'd turn <laughs> the other way. So I can't relate to any of that. Tupac is a gangbanger. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't like that stuff. So no, and I wouldn't say bro. I would say police, police, yeah. like bro, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. Logan's like when Logan starts playing with his fingernails, that's when you know he couldn't give a fuck. And uh, I'm surprised. Like Logan is so dumb that I'm surprised he goes, "Man, okay, now that you guys are done with all this like stupid black stuff that I can." Oh, I mean, ah, uh, ha, ha, ha. You know, he's almost that stupid that you would think he would say something like that. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Bro, we're in the middle of a couple of bros. Bro. When and where to create That's one. right. Yeah. Like, bro. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, Pac was that guy. That guy. Well, one more bro. I, I didn't appreciate Pac when he was alive because he was dissing everybody that I liked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he was dissing Biggie. He was dissing my What ball. do you mean, yeah, 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 as if that's what your experience was, too? You didn't hear Tupac until after he was dead. Okay? Six-year-old white kids did not listen to Tupac. He had to be seven. He was dissing Nas. He yeah. was dissing Jay. So I liked all of them. You know yeah. what I mean? So I was like, yo, who is this guy? Like, if it was wrestling, like, Pac was the ultimate heel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Like, there yeah. was no... And that's what Big Mike forgot. It really makes this whole East Coast hip-hop story fall all, all apart. Because everybody on the East Coast during that time hated Tupac. Wow. He's from the rival gang. Nobody liked Tupac to, like, two in New York until, like, five years after his death. And their moms came out at, like, the MTV award show and made amends like if you're from new york you did not like tupac uh during that time so it's kind of weird big mike being this born and raised east coast hip-hop guy well what's he doing listening to tupac on the side here you know that ain't the same thing. Like, yo, who was this guy? Like, if it was wrestling, like, Pac was the ultimate heel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Like, there yeah. was no greater heel than Tupac. Like, he didn't give a flying fuck. And he, like, really backed up everything that he used to rap about. Like, Pac shot two facts. cops back in the day. Yeah, People forget facts. That. Yep. You know what oh, I mean? that's a, okay, so you look. Look at Logan. He can't believe it. Here's another very <laughs> white Logan moment. Listen to. This is so, This shows how white. Logan is. Now, remember when Logan did the suicide for us, he was like banished from society for four years. <laughs> now, watch this. And all Logan, so Logan does suicide for us, banished. Anytime Logan's name's brought up, people are like, he should be fucking killed. Like hundreds and thousands of people say this. So, all Logan's ever heard about Tupac is how amazing he is. Well loved by everybody, right? He's grown up his whole life. But he doesn't really know anything about Tupac because of his racism, right? So listen to this. Watch Logan. If it was wrestling, like, Pac was the ultimate heel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Like, there yeah. was no greater heel than Tupac. Like, he didn't give a flying fuck. And he, like, really backed up everything that he used to Watch rap Logan's about. Like, face. Pac shot two cops back in the day. Yeah, People forget facts. That. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? Wait, what? Yeah. He shot two off-duty cops. He saw these off-duty off -duty cops harassing somebody, and he intervened. Ended up shooting both of them. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's just like, like if Pac really was. How, how do you get off of that? He was. Wait. <laughs> I forgot how he got That's off. Insane. I think Logan is very confused right now. <laughs> Wait, he shot two cops, but everyone says they love him. <laughs> this is true? <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, this is the guy who can't live down accidentally approaching a dead body that he shot. And Tupac made two dead bodies with guns, and Logan's never heard a bad word about the man, so he's a little confused right now, huh? I don't remember. <laughs> dropped a really hot track at everybody. <laughs> okay. So, but as far as like... Oh, look at his face. Uh, I give up. I mean, he's like personally bothered by this. Watch Logan's face right Hot here. track at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Somebody as far as fuck. It's like he just found out the world was fake. Pokemon doesn't exist. He's oh really God. hurt by that. 
He's really hurt. This is like a lot happening in his mind over this. Damn, man. Yeah, I'm you know sorry. what? I like Tupac a lot because he always just like, you know, he shot two police and he just like owned it. Okay. But, and meanwhile, like Charlemagne's like on my ass for using the wrong pronoun about like some black chick. It's insane. I would say shooting to anybody is a lot worse than the stuff Charlemagne gets all uppity about every day on Twitter. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why Logan's a bit uh, perturbed. Poor Logan. He's always just one. trying to understand and do yeah. what's right, but he can never figure he it out. He can't figure out what's it's right so because cute. the rules make no sense to him. That is so cute. Isn't that funny, him. Ashley? Yo, bro, I try playing by all your rules, but, <laughs> bro, I got to admit, none of this shit makes sense. All right. As far as like impact is concerned, like he may have he may have been making some of the most impactful hip hop statements ever, right? Yeah, I didn't appreciate it back then. I was like I was young, you know what I mean? So it's like even though I I, I was attracted to the rebelliousness of what he was doing, I didn't uh, pick up on, you know You're attracted to Tupac. Woo um, Ooh, I looked like a chugga chugga choo choo just now. Watch this. It's like a choo-choo train there, Jules. Very cute. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I was going to eat some, uh, what are those panda yummies called? Yeah, the, oh, uh, yeah, panda yummies? Is that, Is that what, what they are? are? Well, <laughs> there used to be this great company called Koala Yummy. No, know? then it can't be. Well, there used to be, yeah, uh, Koala Yummy. This koala is this animal from Australia that they just can't stop talking about. And what it was... Hello Panda. Pillow Panda. Really? Hello Panda. Hello Panda. Hello. Hello Panda. One of these days, you're going to be watching this show, and out of nowhere, I'm going to eat a Hello Panda. I'm going to put it back under my desk. You're never going to know any answers about that. It's going to happen soon. It almost happened today. All right, let's go back to this. Do we have another time code to uh, jump yeah, to? Yeah, go to 2850. 2850, and uh, we're here with Charlemagne and big mike 2850 what about 2853 will that work for these yeah there we go like me you know what i mean <laughs> like i really now i see why <laughs> speaking of being an asshole bro like i saw you just completely shit on post malone what's up with that dude? why do you call my -ma -ma mayonnaise records bro like what's up with all this what's the whole back you know what it was post had made these statements one time that i didn't appreciate because it was like yo he came up in rap music you know what i mean so he had the song white iverson and yep. you know we had him on breakfast club back in the day so he came up in hip-hop but then he made a statement i'm i'm paraphrasing now but the statement was like if you want to cry or, or listen to you know music that has a deeper meaning you know don't listen to rap or something like that and i'm like See, I'm glad, yeah, I do see through a little Post Malone. Now, this is going to be shocking to some people because Posty, right, is so nice. Don't fall for that niceness. That is a fear tactic. Post Malone is terrified. You know, all the uh, guys doing the black music are very terrified that it's all going to come crashing down because they really shouldn't be doing what they're doing, right? Post Malone goes out of his way to baby ever. Like, what he's doing is actually insulting. Post Malone is like, what do you call that? Um, uh, you know, not a pandering, but when you're, uh, you know, what Post Malone does, <laughs> do not confuse that as nice. And I'm glad you could see through Post Malone. Post Malone I does do not add up. I think he seems up. nervous, but he still Very seems nice. Very nervous. To me. Of course, he seems nice. And I'm sure he's. Plenty nice, but he's not that nice. And if he is that nice, gross. Okay? So is, is, let's not be tricked by Post Malone every five days. That he's so nice. Oh, my God. I can't believe he would do that, Tracy. It's all by design. Oh, okay. yeah, and I forgot in this part, Big Mike's going to start to crumble a little bit. Oh, okay. Here Slightly. we go, yeah. So we're about 29 minutes in. He's already starting his hip-hop knowledge. It's starting to crumble. I bet you don't even know what hip hop was. Remember that? hip hop -ra. That was good. It was an opera, hip-hop-wise. Very good. <laughs> it wasn't cheesy at all. <laughs> but it kind of goes... But it, <laughs> like, not only did you come up in hip-hop, but that's just not true. Like, you just... You heard what you just quoted yeah, from Pac, like... But, but that's what I'm, I'm going to ask you about, too, is, like, it, it goes back... 
we we know Pac. We remember Pac. No, we no. remember some of the artists around that time that were bringing out this stuff about societal change and about you know the affliction of, uh, of black communities and the stuff that socioeconomic classes are going through. But when you look and at why did you relate to that as a teenager exactly? I mean, can't you just tell the truth? That's like, it's like you couldn't have related to black struggle as like a twelve year old white kid. You just couldn't. It wouldn't do anything for you. It would be boring to you like it was to me you know nobody uh, this isn't the type of hip-hop you need to claim you like as a white person either you could be like oh that story like totally doesn't relate to me i could respect it but don't pretend oh that's the good stuff please it's not the good stuff we want the party music okay we're whites we don't got no streets okay these streets are fine got a song about how streets are all right i'll listen to that hip-hop now even even back to just like early 2000s 2010s the music started to change a lot post is so young mm -hmm. that like i'm I, I bet you the majority of what he bases too. around hip-hop is pop a molly drink some lean fuck a bitch you know what i'm saying and so like in a way do you feel <clears throat> like we have you know hip-hop has become watered down to a point where it's just like yo it's party music like like no i think hip-hop is nuanced and there's a lot of different types of hip-hop yep, like yep. If I, I can go from future to kendrick lamar just like that yep. you know what i mean i can go from you know rap city you to the never hear mike mention kendrick lamar ever i don't even think mike has listened well he just gave this big long speech about how there's it's all party it's all music, party music. Yeah. and then he went well what about kendrick lamar and then mike goes yup yup it's like, well, then why did you say that? I know. Why did you say that then? Go from I thought you were a hip hop head. Kendrick Lamar, just like that. Yep. You know what I mean? I can go from, you know, Rhapsody to the Migos, just like that. Like, you know, like there's guys that rap about, you know, drugs and using drugs and selling drugs. And then there's people that have shit that got socially redeeming value in their music. Like, it's so much dope ass content. There's too much content out here. You know what I mean? So if all you're hearing is that, then that's all you're listening to. But, but don't you think it's being elevated uh -oh. more than the conscious rap? Like, don't you think uh -oh. that. Don't you think that, like, in a lot of ways, around the same time when the when the dealer, remember how the dealer used to get elevated? Jay yeah, was the, Jay yeah. was the guy, right? Yeah, then they started celebrating the fiend, yeah, the user, right? Yeah. And so, don't you think that that like drug use mentality, that party mentality, that substance mentality, is like elevated more than Kendrick, more than I Jay don't Cole think so, like that? Because if you look at the last like twelve years, right, and you look at the just unbelievable the top five <laughs> biggest rappers in the game, there's probably only one that's doing that was that's really the leader of that and that was that There's was one future. final time in a lot of ways yeah, yeah sure this one is logan related 102 Ooh, 15 102 15 any secrets or hints that i need to know about let's for this just one? see if logan does any more microaggressions similar okay. to the ones we saw at the beginning 102 15 yeah he's pretty bored by this black convo today 102.15, you say? Yes. There you go. 102.05, I'll treat you. You, bro, it's like you. It's like everything inside of you, that child just, like, breaks down for a second. That's all you want. Like, that's literally all you want. If I would have got that when I was young, that shit would have saved me a lot. Like, I remember my uh, my pops my pops was cheating on my mom, and I confronted him about it. And I'm like, yo, you out here cheating on mom? I was, like, 17 at the time. He looked at me, he goes, oh, you only got one girlfriend? <laughs> he goes, when you get older, <laughs> you'll understand. He shamed you. Yeah, rest, right? So in my mind, I'm like, Oh my God! I fucked uh, only got one girl. I'm a pussy. Uh, I'm exactly. Uh, no, that was my promise. You, that was uh, my mind man. state. Uh, so man. it took me a long time. I'm talking about he hit you with a reverse. What a thug! Oh. <laughs> he goes. Oh. Excuse me. Looking. We got him. We got him. Illegal. Is that a nice sounding way to talk? <laughs> Illegal. Imagine me yelling that in your head all night while you're trying to party. Illegal. What you're doing? Um, listen to what we just caught Logan Paul call a black person. It took me a long time. I'm talking about he hit you with a reverse. What a thug. Oh. <laughs> he goes, oh. excuse me. What a thug. Whoa. Very interesting. Here, we'll hear that one more time. It took me a long time. I'm talking about he hit you with a reverse. What a thug. Oh. <laughs> he goes, no. oh, you only have one girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like this, uh, damn. It was, there it was. Did Big Mike say something terrible following that up? Or why do I confuse that? I can't remember. There it was. I mean, I don't know how much sure more proof you need. I'm sure there's much more. Uh, there's your Big Mike update. Same Big Mike. Same Big Mike that we used to know.